live, didn't you? Mm -hmm. we're, we're live. We're live. We're live. Okay, let me, uh... How's it going? I'm Marlon from Workshop 5001, and uh, we're going to do a shop tour. Let me take the phone for a second. Here we go. It's Jacob. Jacob's helping with the video today. Where's Chris? Oh, wow. People are signed in. Look at this. People are looking. There's Chris. How's it going? <laughs> Let's see. Who else? Who else can we say hello to? Chris, you're on here. Aren't you supposed to be working? Here's Diana. Diana, say hi. We're on Instagram Live. Hi. <laughs> Where's Marcus? Marcus in the bathroom? Should we go in the bathroom? Say hi to Marcus. No. <laughs> so... Anyway, how do we, can I flip this around? Yeah, I can, right? Um, yeah. There we go. Hi, everybody. So, um, all right, we're going to do a little bit of a, a shop tour. I'll show you some of the, the engines we're working on, servicing, etc. cetera. This, uh, this is a 3.6 out of a 9.64 that is just getting some service work. It's kind of a dirty, crusty engine that, uh, not getting rebuilt. It only has 77,000 miles, but it's still a strong engine and, um, getting serviced, resealed the chain boxes. There's a gasket that's between the chain box and the crankcase that was leaking. And, uh, as much as I'd love to take this whole thing apart and clean it, some OCD, look at all this nastiness. It's uh, just getting a service. So uh, also we're going to replace all the fuel lines. The fuel lines are old and we don't want it to burn down. So every fuel line is going to get replaced. And at least Porsche is nice enough to still make these, even though they're like $500 a piece. Um, that's the intake manifold. We'll get new, new gaskets. And uh, that's the power steering pump. No one rebuilds them anymore, but at least uh, we can get kits and we'll rebuild the pump. Some of the pieces off of it. And uh, this is the car that it belongs to. It's a 93 964. You can see it's got some patina. And the new owner is super into that and it's going to have fun running around New York and actually being able to drive and enjoy this car and park at places and not worry too much. And uh, we left the normal seat on the passenger side uh, so his kids can crawl in the back. But we did a, um, you know, special Recaro seat, Momo steering wheel. So this car got kind of the sport purpose makeover. So here are some of the nice clean engines. This one uh, just came off the, uh, the dyno. And... It is a 3.45 liter. I think most people just call it a three and a half. And um, I built this one off of a brand new crankcase. Porsche Classic reissued these, uh, these crankcases. And so I built off of it. It's got a GT3 crank, uh, all kinds of other trick special components. Molly Motorsport made us... Uh, special piston um you know it's got you know heat exchangers so these are small diameter tubes so it you know we left a little bit of horsepower on the table but at least it'll have heat it won't be too loud no droning um so once it's in the chassis this will be really nice i do a lot of these engines that go in the earlier cars um kind of to have the same look you know i really like the look of these um amber fiberglass shrouds it's kind of a throwback to the race cars porsche race cars back in the day um so we have that and then we do a lot of black and kinsler who makes all our throttle bodies um you know they they do them in black for us then the valve covers i have anodized to get that battleship gray so you know the gray the tan the black i think it's kind of a cool uh color combination so uh it has um kind of become a bit of a theme you can see we got another one here this is a 2.9 liter 
they came out of a, a right hand drive short wheelbase that came back to us for some paint issues and uh, kind of going back through the car a little bit after it's been on the road for a few years and uh, let's see what else so then we've got this is one of our full builds because even though building engines is is kind of my thing um, we do build entire cars with our team not everyone's here today some people are out for uh, the Thanksgiving holiday and some of the guys we work with have their own shops, like Sakata, who does all our wiring. His place is in Anaheim. Uh, our trimmer's got his own shop. The painters have their own shop. So, But all the final assembly is done here. And this is... Let's see if I can rotate this. It won't rotate. It yeah. won't rotate? Yeah. It kind of looked like it did. So, so this is a 3.9 liter. So the crankcase in this started life as a normal 3.6 from a 93 or 94, 964, 911, and machined the crankcase to accept the bigger cylinders. Um, this I built with 102 millimeter cylinders. Um, I know there are some people who build these engines bigger, but... Um, I think this is the better way to do it. I think it's stronger. That 102 with a 109 spigot, I think, is the strongest air-cooled cylinder that Molly has made for Porsche. So I stick with it, and we basically we stroke this engine. It's got um, a 80.4 um, millimeter RSR crank, which you know a lot of people talk about the four-liter GT3, the 997.2 from you know 2011, 2012, and. Um, this is the crank, or the evolution of that crank, and it was run in factory RSR race cars. Um, so, uh, so a lot of expensive components go into making this engine, but it kind of adds a whole new dimension to um, the performance of a 964. Um, we are, uh, I'd say, uh, 100, 100 and... 40 horsepower more than original. Um, and torque is probably 60 foot pounds. Oh, someone's giving us the finger on here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. So, but people are waving. That's nice. One guy gave us the finger. We appreciate the love. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so, uh, this car's kind of cool. We, we're doing final shakedown, so we've got it in pieces, that door's back apart. Um, but, uh, neat car built it, uh, all to the client's specifications and he picked out his colors and you know, our trimmer has a new laser CNC machine. It's kind of neat. And, uh, let's put the car up in the air so you can see underneath. So, uh, you want to hold it for a second? Okay, so we're going to go underneath the car now. Let's see, we build these basically like a brand new car. So this exhaust system we got from uh, Car Graphic in Germany, and um, they're supposedly equal length headers. They sound pretty good. Um, and uh, what they do is they encapsulate the... Um, whatchamacallit, the uh, catalytic converter. Um, they create a chamber and that's, that's how they do heat. That's uh, how it's a heat exchanger. And then it runs, this is a factory tube. So you basically have air that flows, flows through. We use a bilge pump fan, but normally you were pulling it off of the engine cooling fan. It was kind of dual purpose. It would blow through the tubes, blow through here, then blow it to the front of the car. And you have uh, tubes in the chassis. You can't, can't see them, they're not visible, but they're hidden away in there. You can see this is basically a, uh, a brand new car. It's kind of neat. Not cheap to build these. 
but a lot of fun. KW suspension we use on almost every car. And uh, yeah. So kind of look from this direction. So everyone's waving at us. Does anyone have any questions? We can answer questions. What's this when it says four next to the camera? Um, what does that mean? I want to join the live. What does that mean? So I mean like if you want to like have another person to like ask or have a conversation with them while. Oh. So it's we, like two people on the same live stream. Do we want to do that or no? Uh, probably not. Probably not. If Sorry. you guys have any questions. Yeah, um, you can ask me questions, but, them, but I don't know that we're going to let you on the live stream. I don't think we're allowed. I don't know that we want you on here. <laughs> Might say something silly. So, there's that car. And uh, what else can we show? We're a little light on cars, thankfully. We got some stuff out of here. We have some stuff out at the paint shop. So we can actually move around. Normally, it's like playing Tetris in the building here. So, we'll look. This is a... That's a 1988 911 that uh, it's also just getting some kind of sport purpose modifications. And, uh, you know, sport exhaust. This car's going to Hawaii, even though it has a California plate on it now. And uh, he's not going to need uh, to pass California smog. So he's got a, um, this is like a 100 cell cat. Probably won't pass smog, but redid the brakes on this car, rebuilt the brake calipers, pads, new sensors. What else did we do to this thing? New uh, new KW suspension. See, all rebuilt. To redo all the hub bearings on these. The older cars are kind of a lot of work, so. Um, Let's see what else we can show you guys. So this is an engine that is um, is going together. I'm not going to unwrap it, but I keep them all wrapped up when uh, they're open. This is an almost complete long block, but um, we had a little bit of a situation where I went to unbox the cams, and um, thanks to uh, UPS, let's see, this is... This is what I found in the box. Cam, broken in half. Yeah, that sucked. Set me back a couple days. Thanks, UPS. Who gave us the runaround for two days and then told us because it was more than 14 days that we could go pound sand. But uh, I guess that is shame on me for not inspecting them the second they arrived. I left them in the box and put them on the shelf. And, uh, you know, a month or so later, I open it up and surprise. Let's see. We got some cars here. This is a 75 Carrera that um, that 3.5 liter is going into. It's kind of a neat car. And uh, what else? Let's see what we got. This is another one that's here. This is next on deck to get a 3.9 liter engine. It's an RS America. Only built about 700 of these cars. And, uh, the other ones are I'm not going to show you. So those, that's under wraps. Marcus is here working on parts intake. Say hi, Marcus. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, we just have lots and lots of parts coming in and checking them in, getting them organized. You know, basically our carts we use for parts. So, for example, uh, you know, one of the engines I'm building is, uh, you know, this 993 engine that's going to go to a client in Singapore. I'll dyno the engine and then send it. But, you know, this whole shelf is, is filled with all the parts, new parts. Some old parts, you know, stuff that is still relevant uh, to the build and needs to be gone through, double-checked. Um, 
Because when we rebuild one of these Porsche engines, it's, it's sort of a mix of new and old. Um, you know, like the whole concept, for example, of like a crate engine does not exist with Porsche. Um, at least not with the old stuff. Um, you can buy almost everything to rebuild a Porsche engine new. Um, but there's still like, for example, cam towers uh, can't get. So, uh, so we have to reuse them. So there's, there's certain things we'd, uh, we'd love to have brand new. But uh, having to redo a lot of stuff. So this is one of the engines on deck. You can see parts in here ready to go. And uh, this will be, after I finish that 993 engine, this will be another 3.9 liter 964 engine that will run on Motec and Kinsler. And, uh, you know, so every one of these carts is for a project, or some projects have multiple carts. You know, for example, uh, HK 964 is a car that's at the paint shop. It was just painted and just showed you the cart for its engine. You have one thing is old parts, new parts, and everything is here and hopefully sort of organized so that when we go to start putting this car together, um, what's that one? Oh, that's from a different car. So, all right. Are there any questions? I saw a few and I kind of missed them, but, um, if people ask questions, we can answer them. Let's see, can I put in a comment? Can I go? No questions yet. Well, I mean, people really? can comment them or they can send them through. Oh, oh, so they're not sending them through. So they're commenting them. Let's see, I'm gonna comment. Questions? Questions? Let's see. How about uh, give a little bit of trivia about the shop? Trivia? Um, started... So I started the shop in 2013, I guess, 2014, and um, bought the building. We renovated it, and it's kind of one of these neat bow truss ceiling buildings that, uh, you know, I grew up in New York, and we didn't really have buildings like this. It's more of an L.A. thing, and um, so we media blasted it, and it left the raw wood, and we thought it was cool. We did the same thing with the walls and uh, polish the concrete. So it's got kind of a vintage look. There was, oh, some guy asked, why are Porsche parts so expensive? This is underscore remus. I don't know why they're so expensive, but they're, they're, they're expensive. <laughs> you know, that's maybe a better, uh, better question to ask someone at Porsche. Let them give you the runaround. So, um, I mean, the cars are expensive, uh, and I think maybe it's just an economy of scale thing that anything is produced in uh, lower volume is going to be more money. Also, you got to consider the R&D that goes into producing those parts. Like, it's the best quality. They're making this some of the best engines on earth. And yeah. Yeah, the I mean, engineers on I know we're going to piss some people off, but yeah, Porsche cars are probably the best cars. Mm -hmm. I like Land Rovers, but Land Rovers are complete pieces of shit, but I still really like them, so... But, uh, all right, let's, let's look at this engine a little bit more. So this runs on a MoTeC computer. And uh, maybe some of you guys who are also building engines run MoTeC. And maybe you're having the same problems getting product out of them. And they were just bought by Bosch. Hopefully that's a good thing. Maybe they'll start delivering parts. I'd hate to have to find an alternative to MoTeC. We do like the MoTeC stuff, but they need to get their act together and get us ECUs. So, because for example, that car, not only does it run a MoTeC M130 for the engine, but we're running two MoTeC PDM30s for uh, the chassis. And there's no more fuse panel. It all runs on PDM. So it's a you know great product that allows us to you know, kind of modernize these cars a bit, but we need product. And I know a lot of, um, a lot of, um, you know, companies have had issues delivering parts and everyone's making excuses, but it seems like 
almost everyone we deal with has gotten their act together, except for Motec. And uh, Molly Motorsport is telling people 18 weeks for pistons, and it's a lot more than that. I wish they would get their act together. And then our, uh, our guy at Molly Motorsport left, which was kind of a bummer, Help, helped us develop a uh, bunch of neat pistons that no one had ever done before. And uh, now uh, he left the automotive business. So that was, uh, that was a bit of a kick in the nuts. So let's see. Any more uh, questions? What is this? How many people are following? We've got 19 people following. I don't know. Maybe we're boring. We're, lo- we're losing followers here. Oh, here's, uh, here's someone. We're having people coming and going. People are coming and going. Yeah. So, uh, what else can we show? Maybe we'll show the outside of the building. You guys want to see the neighborhood? So, we're in a neighborhood called West Adams here in L.A. And it's a little bit of a sketchy neighborhood, but... uh, we like it. Let's see. Let's go outside. This is my castle door here. Let's see. Here we are. In... Hey, hi, Paula. We're doing Instagram Live. <laughs> oh, one guy's commenting on uh, Molly. He's had hell with Molly parts lately. Yeah. I don't want to complain too much. They make nice pistons, but they need to deliver product way faster than 18 weeks. That's for sure. So, so we're back. I have a really cool bathroom. It's our cool bathroom. It's all industrial. This is uh, like subway grate. So if we turn on water here, the water just water just flows through into the drain pretty neat and then my dog's not here today but he drinks this is a a thing for the dog to drink because he kept knocking over bowls when he was a puppy so he uh, drinks out of the the nozzle Paula where is the dog you didn't bring him no no dog today sorry guys Yeah, so uh, future projects, uh, we have a car that's at paint. That's another one of our full builds that'll kind of be like this one, but it's a different color gray. Our clients love gray. We do a lot of gray cars. And the next one will be Grigio Scuro, which is a Ferrari color. Um, This particular car is uh, chalk, which is a current Porsche color, a lot like fashion gray. Um, and um, now I'll show you some of my equipment here this is an ultrasonic machine Um, I've got some stuff piled up on it here that clean parts that are going to go back on this engine soon this is just like a regular parts washer almost every shop has one of these this thing's like a big dishwasher we can put parts in here and then this thing rotates around and squirts it. Uh, Maybe it's some kind of like spa treatment for engine parts. And um, what else? And then when once parts are clean, you know, then they can go through ultrasonic and anything that has like small little passageways, uh, this cleans it out with ultrasonic waves um well all these people are sending view requests to be in the video who have funny names they're probably like hackers and they want to take over our video so um that's it yeah i don't know i don't want to i'm not gonna let these people on here how about uh, so. i ask you if you trust me yeah okay let's let's hand it back to jacob he can ask me questions so um what has been your favorite car that you've built so far through 5,000 
my favorite car that we've built so far. Uh, I don't know, you're assuming I remember all of them. Um, all right, favorite of the numbered builds? Of the numbered builds. Um, well, we're, we're at about 11 of them right now. Uh, I think my favorite, there's a 72 911 that we built. Um, it's fashion gray with green interior. I really like that car. Um, we built it with a straight cut uh, intermediate gear in the engine. So it kind of winds almost a little bit like a supercharger. So it's entertaining for like an hour of driving and then and you're not so into it anymore. Um, so, but we, we actually have a second engine we can swap into that car for the client and eliminate that uh, noise of the intermediate gear. But if someone was looking for like a race experience on the road and you know, all the, the noises and that, that's a neat car to, to go rip around the canyons with. So uh, it's pretty cool, I like that car. The first car we built was a 73 911 and that, um, uh, that car is uh, Nardo gray. That car is cool. Then um, the number three car is the only 356 we've built, and that has a Polo engine. Um, that thing's very cool also. It's faster than you would ever want a 356 to be. Uh, it's a lot of fun for the Canyons, kind of cruising on PCH. It's like you get in that car and it's like, it's meant to be in California. It's uh, that kind of a car. So um, what else? Uh, yeah, I guess those are those are my favorites, and uh, you know we're building more, and you know everyone will see those cars when they're done. And, yeah. So. We have a uh, question from Miles. He says, "What is your favorite or most useful tool in the shop?" My favorite or most useful tool in the shop. Oh, okay, all right. This is actually no, it's out. So this is <laughs> this is my flex head snap on quarter inch drive and I really like the extension with the lock so you can't use it and this is you know a 10 millimeter wobbly head so there's just I don't know on, on the Porsche engines there's a lot of m6 bolts that um, you know that have the 10 millimeter head and when you're working on an engine I think the last thing you ever want to do is lose a tool in an engine so at least this is kind of has this nifty lock and uh, so you put that on, that's not coming off. And uh, so I would say, I don't know, I guess I use this more than anything. So it's not the most exciting thing, but I use it a lot. Maybe it's my favorite tool. Um, I don't know, what else, what else do I have that might be my favorite tool? Um, I think one of the other things I really like is that Snap-on does, um, you know, it's like the same, basically the same, uh, you know, ratchet. It looks the same, but I've got a three-eighths head instead of the quarter inch. So this way you can work with three-eighths, but, you know, you're putting sort of low torque on things. Uh, I think for sort of delicate operations, this is, this is a good tool. I really, uh, I really like that. And um, what else do we have? wrenches um, these are kind of interesting for you know getting into some of the hardware and Porsche exhaust systems can be a little tricky especially with those SSI heat exchangers so there's one or two nuts that you need to use that so those are kind of cool so, so this is my drawer that is dedicated to some of the Porsche specific engine stuff and some of my measuring devices and these are kind of a fun tool and they're not really a tool but I've made them a tool these are like girls scrunchy hair ties and I um, I got the idea I guess you know I have a wife and two daughters so I live in uh, live in a house with a bunch of girls and uh, you know, the scrunchy hair ties work really well for when you've assembled a crankcase and uh, you don't have the pistons on yet, but you need to be able to rotate the engine and keep the rod centered. 
um, I use those scrunchies and they're just the right size. I double them up, cross them over and hold the rod, you know, through the, um, you know, where the wrist pin would go into the piston. I put that and then put it to the head studs and then I can rotate the engine and it has flex, but it keeps them centered. Um, so I've seen people use like um, some 911 engines, like, you know, a normal 964 would have like a green O-ring on the base of the cylinder. I've seen some people use those, um, but I don't know. I use the scrunchy, scrunchy hair ties. So that's kind of a, a fun thing. Let's see what else. You know. Got another oh, question so. from a oh, okay. 964 K9 dog. That's a cool username. Yeah. He says, I am building a 964 engine. After a valve drop failure, first time building an engine, can you give any advice to a rookie? <laughs> Be prepared to build it multiple times that uh you know i think the biggest issue with these engines is getting them to not leak oil and even when you do everything perfect um sometimes you'll have a leak and it's typically a 30 to 40 hour uh you know problem and you have to take it apart so um be prepared to take it apart multiple times but um i would say you're probably better off having someone who's trained in building Porsche engines and does them repetitively do it for you. Um, because, you know, you, you could do it and everyone has to start somewhere, but I would say that doing them in repetition and having your system, having all your stuff laid out is, um, uh, is really important to having a certain level of uh, quality from the engine and not having it leak everywhere. You know, like I can show you, you know, this is kind of like my table that I keep set up and, you know, I've got items that I use regularly. Um, they're all kind of ready to go. I'll show you what some of these items are. And, um, you know, like I have nickel anti seize copper anti seize I've got all my different paint markers. Um, we've got different, uh, this is a grease that um, my friend Randy gave me. I dyno all my engines at his place and you know, I've started using this grease on um, through bolt O-rings. I just, I don't know, I like the viscosity of it. He turned me on to it because sometimes I've used like, this is like a, you know, a normal, you know, Parker Hannafin O-ring lube. And this is, um, this isn't as thick of a, you know, consistency or viscosity as the Bosch one. So, you know, it's good for certain O-rings, but maybe not others. Uh, some tool, uh, three bond, you know, I very often put dates on this stuff just to remind me how old it is so that I'm not using old chemicals. Um, you know, this, you know, a lot of times, every time I build an engine, I'll usually use a new tube of this. This, um, I may be able to use on one more. I open this 613.22. Maybe do one more engine with this one. Got a question from, uh, JS Loss 27. I'm saying that right. Uh, he says, is there a motor in that Amazon Green 964 yet? Oh, that's, that's a, here, that's him. Here you go. Oh. Here's your, here's your engine. <laughs> it's not in there yet, but it will be. That's funny. So we're getting there. I think today the breather cap's coming off. I'll deck that to make sure it's not leaking. The O-ring on the housing for the, um, you know, this is for uh, oil pressure. And this is for oil temperature, these two sensors. But they sit in a little housing that has a green O-ring. And uh, something was leaking here. Or it also could have been leaking from the manifold. But regardless, uh, those two O-rings are going to get changed. We have the one fuel line that's uh, kind of tucked in there. And uh, that's really why the manifold is off. And that'll get changed. But valve covers are back on. Valves are adjusted torque the pulley that's back on so it's kind of interesting um these uh, 964 engines had uh had sort of a funny distributor where you know one is driven you know off of a gear on the crank and then there's a belt inside of here that um that drives them so it's kind of cool here i don't know i'll rotate it why don't you uh yeah. watch so Come around this side so you can watch as I rotate the engine. Okay. Uh, come around this side so you can watch the distributor, the rotors. 
So as I rotate the engine, you can see I've this many. Oh, not the caps. Let's see. Let's see, because I've got plugs in. Let's see if I can pop another one. No, doesn't want to do it now. But uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. This is the entertainment for the. Uh, Cool. You know it's got compression. So, and then you can see it, they line back up. You have little marks, so we're, we know we're at TDC number one again now. Put our caps back in. Those things popped up pretty far. It's kind of fun. And, uh, all right, any more questions? On yes, that? we have one from Miles again. It says, are most of the Porsche engines an opposed engine design? What does he say? What did he say? Are most of the Porsche engines an opposed engine design? Horizontally opposed? I mean, um, I guess. Yeah, I mean, all the 911 engines. You know. but they make other stuff now. Okay, let's ask Paula some questions. She's right here. <laughs> Hi, Paula. <laughs> so, uh, how do I... Uh, we ask some of the, all right what else any more questions? questions you want to ask people questions who who are we going to ask questions to chris and marcus chris and marcus let's let's go bug chris what's chris doing where's chris is chris on his break he's going to go try to hide so here's chris so chris what do you think about porsche engines think about them yeah you like porsche engines yeah they're cool <laughs> yeah what's your favorite engine uh the one probably in the chalk car in the chalk car why do you like that one it likes to boogie it likes to boogie yeah yeah so that chalk car chris you want to show us some of the chalk car maybe point out yeah. some things because really yeah chris chris did a significant amount of the assembly on the chassis side of this car did a great job and uh, so, Chris, you want to show? Why don't you show us some of your favorite things on the car, or maybe some of the things that were most difficult from an assembly perspective? Oh what did you just drop? What is that? Earbud. Your earbud. Yeah. Probably the steering rack and the brake booster. This is some complicated stuff up here. Yeah, so when we do ITBs, we really don't have enough vacuum for the brake booster. So what we've done, you can sort of see it here, is we have a little hella pump that sits in a bracket that we, uh, we made here. And then it has an external switch. Because um, I used to use, there was a company in Europe that uh, made a vacuum pump that had its own internal switch. So at a certain PSI, it would shut off. Um, but Hella doesn't make one like that for whatever reason. So we had to source an external switch. It had to be a switch that was the right sort of pressure range. So the first car we did this on, there was a little bit of head scratching, um, but now, uh, now we've got it pretty dialed in. Unfortunately, that other company in Europe who made a nice unit, um, I don't know. They make excuses for supply chain and uh, can't get us parts and, uh, you know, who knows. But what's interesting is those vacuum pumps are actually typically used on an electric car because they still want vacuum assist on an electric car. And, uh, you know, so they use an, uh, you know, an electric vacuum pump. So, um, so at least electric cars are good for something. So, uh, yeah, I saw a funny meme yesterday. I think they're called memes, right? With yeah. the, when they do the video. And it showed a guy with a V8 M3. And it says, well, you know, what I say to people when they ask what I buy, why I buy, bought a V8. And then he had some guys like, because I'm not a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I don't know, a lot of electric cars in L.A. People seem to like them. And uh, I know that's a big debate, electric cars versus gas cars. And now we have our governor of California getting involved in cars and making a rule of, uh, I shouldn't get political. All right. Well, I don't know. 
Chris. We only got 14 viewers. There's only, only 14 people who could potentially hate me for what I have to say. So. And, uh. Which ABS? Which car is electric? Electric AC. Oh, yeah. This car has electric air condition. So that helped clean the engine bay up because um, normally, do we have one with an AC compressor? Uh, it's visible. Uh, uh, that car I don't think has AC. So, so normally in these cars, you have an AC compressor that would sit on a bracket. It would kind of sit here. So it's big and, big and ugly. Um, so we used electric air condition on this car. So it really helped clean up the engine bay. You know, kind of a, sh you know, sort of a show car sort of thing. Because cars that we send to certain parts of the world where um, air condition is really critical, we, um, we keep the factory AC. Because even if it doesn't look great, you know, it's a, it's a well-engineered and tested system. And so we'll leave it for certain, certain markets. Like I think the next, the next one we're building, we're going to keep the original air condition. So won't be the best looking thing in the engine bay, but, um, you know, if you really want a car to be practical, having uh, good heat and good air condition is important. And we actually, not that long ago, installed heat and air condition in the shop. We did these uh, kind of these mini split Mitsubishi units, which uh, not the best looking thing, but they work very nicely, keep us nice and warm because it used to get super hot in the building and then some days it would get super cold. So it, I think it's really important to have a comfortable work environment where it's not too hot and not too cold. I don't know, any more questions? Otherwise I think we're almost, uh, we're almost done here. Let's go, come on, questions. Ask some kind of a question. And no more questions. So what do we do now? Let's scroll up, see if we missed any. Oh yeah, we can scroll up. Oh, it doesn't look like we have. No questions at all. No. None for this Porsche mastermind here. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. And uh, if anyone does have questions later, they can shoot us an email, info at workshop5001.com. Hopefully our uh, takeover was not too boring and someone appreciated it. So uh, have a good day. And, uh, you know, as always, a big thank you to Engine Builder Magazine. Those guys are great, and it's uh, really an honor to have them be impressed with the work that I do. Um, you know, I, uh, I worked really, really hard to learn how to build these engines, and it's not easy. And uh, even when you think you did everything perfect, there can sometimes be problems. And, uh, but we work through them. It's not easy, but uh, we enjoy it. And uh, thank you again. All right? Have a good day. Bye.